All right, so we're going to go ahead and get started here as our uh, other guests continue to join us. Um, good morning, good evening, good afternoon, everyone, regard, uh, uh, depending on where you're coming to us from. Uh, my name is Wyatt. I'm the Associate Director of Global Admissions here at Schwarzman Scholars, and I am so excited that you're joining us today. This is one of my favorite, uh, favorite things about my job being to interact with our uh, scholars and alumni and, and fellow staff. And I'm so glad that you all are taking time out of your day to join us and that you're interested in Schwarzman Scholars. So there's, um, I think we'll all agree um, during our conversation today that there's never been a more important time to, to train and, and uh, support the next generation of leaders and the world that, and the situation we're living right through right now globally um, you know, really reminds us that we're more connected than we ever realized and that the challenges that we are facing globally require global solutions and, and leaders who are um, able to work across time zones, across disciplines, across borders, um, across languages uh, to solve these problems together. And that's really what uh, this program is all about, preparing you for that world as a leader. So uh, we are super lucky today to be uh, joined by one of my amazing colleagues, uh, Melanie, and our amazing um, alumni um, of Schwarzman Scholars who will introduce themselves in a bit, but I just wanted to give you a brief welcome. Thank you for joining us. Um, and I'll come back at the very end after our Q&A um, and tell you a little bit more about the admissions process and the application that will be opening up very soon. So with that, I'm gonna turn it over to my colleague, Melanie. Okay, thanks so much, Wyatt. And I'll, I'll echo Wyatt and saying this is my, my I think my favorite webinar to do uh, with, with the admissions team, because I also get to, to spend an hour hanging out with some of, uh, some of our wonderful alumni. Um, as you can see from Zoom, my name is Melanie. I'm the Associate Dean responsible for student life. So all of the things outside of the classroom, and I guess a, a couple of things inside the classroom too, which, uh, which Mandy will talk about. Um, but normally I live in the college as well. So I get to know our, our wonderful alumni well over the year that they're in the college. So it's always, uh, it's always so wonderful to get a little, a little chance to reconnect with them in these. Um, so as I mentioned, I'm, so I'm dialing in from Squamish, British Columbia. Uh, before I, I joined the Schwartzman Scholars Program in 2016 in our, in our launch year. Um, previous to my work in, in higher education, I was a Canadian diplomat for, for a number of years. And so I, as Wyatt mentioned, you know, the importance of these kinds of programs uh, to that person to person uh, connection and person to person diplomacy is so important. And so uh, the mission of the program is is incredibly important. And again, we're seeing that now more than ever in the world. So I'm so thrilled to have people uh, joining us from around the world uh, among our participants, but also among our four um, our four panelists for today. So I'll invite um, each of them to briefly introduce themselves and then and then we'll jump right in uh, where they can give you a bit more uh, a bit more of a, a, of a real sense of what it's like to be a Schwartzman scholar as you contemplate uh, uh, potentially applying. Uh, let's see, so I'll go in the order that, that you're showing up on my screen. So Katia uh, can go first and then Jack. Thanks, Melanie. Thanks, uh, and happy to have you all here in this call. I'm so happy. Uh, my name is Katia. I'm actually calling right now from New York, uh, although I'm based in Nicaragua at the moment. I am Swartzman Scholar from 2020 cohort. Uh, so I graduated last year in June. Uh, before actually joining the program, I was for around three years working at a financial institution in Nicaragua, and now I'm currently uh, working for a Swiss-based NGO. I'm doing it remotely from Nicaragua, but basically doing that development uh, work because I transitioned into finance from uh, from finance to development and right now I'm working in the expansion of this organization to Latin American countries so it's a pleasure to have you all here and I can't wait to share more about my experience. Great thank you Katya. Uh, Jack over to you and then yes. we'll go with Arnaz. Okay um, thank you Melanie and then uh, hi everyone. So uh, my name is Jack. Uh, I'm from China and I graduated uh, last May as a member of the uh, fourth cohort and I'm right now calling in from uh, North Carolina. And uh, before uh, coming to Schwarzman, I uh, spent my undergrad years at uh, New York University majoring in uh, politics and um, sociology. And um, after graduation, I actually spent some time uh, to work on test preps and law school applications. And I'm currently working as a research assistant to a practicing attorney focusing on labor rights issues of Chinese overseas workers while I uh, start to hear back from law schools. So it's uh, truly a pleasure to be here today and I look forward to sharing my experience with everyone. Great, thank you so much, Jack. Uh, over to you, Arnaz. 
Hi, it's so nice to be here. I'm so excited to hear that Jack is also applying to law school because I'm a lawyer and I am a, a classmate. I was a classmate uh, with Kapia and Jack in the 2020 cohort. So we graduated last year in June and I'm working right now on climate change in North India with the government. Great, thank you for, for joining us Arnaz. And uh, finally, Mandy. Hey guys, so excited to have you guys join us today. Uh, my name is Mandy. I'm currently calling in from Shanghai, uh, where I work at a fitness startup. Um, and I had graduated in the uh, third cohort, so in 2019, um, when the world looked quite different back then. Uh, and before that, I did management consulting for a couple of years in New York. Um, I'm born and raised New Yorker. Um, and before that, I uh, went to school at NYU Abu Dhabi. Um, so excited to talk to you guys more about the Shoresman program and um, kind of what a big impact it made on, on my life. Hey, wonderful. Well, thanks again to all of you for taking time uh, early in the morning or late at night to, to, to join us. Uh, let's see. So let's let's start with, with Katia. Um, and Katia, perhaps you can talk to us a little bit about what, it, what it's like to live at the college and, and on the Tsinghua campus. Yeah, thank you, Melanie. I I will say that definitely um, when I thought of, you know, going into Swartzman College, I, I I always like thought of this experience, especially being exposed in a very international environment was something that got me really, really excited. So I will say, first of all, like uh, being at the college and living there, um, with this amazing, incredible building is uh, to have a really safe and open space to get to know people more. And why do I say this? And it's because um, I feel like the most important part of living there is just that you foster a strong relationships. I remember that every every time I walk around the building, I, I will always have someone, you know, stopping me by and telling me um, how was my day, uh, if I needed help on anything. It was just an amazing experience because I feel like you feel like that connection with so many people. And it wasn't just a place for you to study, but it's a place for you to you know, create meaningful connections and, and have friendships all around the world and everything. I will also say that uh, living there in the college also makes it uh, so amazing. And like, you get a taste of an international experience, like not only in inside the, like the college, but also outside, uh, because the things that were in Tsinghua, you know, like um, we're part of like the Tsinghua like community as well. So that means that every time do, that we have guests, you know, coming into the college, we're always like taking them on tours. I remember last year we had the amazing opportunity, like coming from a Latin American country and having so many delegations coming into the college. We have, for example, delegations from Brazil, delegations from Argentina. So we as like as scholars always took them into the tours around the college, gave them a little bit of the taste that we, we, we have every single day. So it was really nice because I, I mean, you don't feel like you are just, you know, unconnected from the external world, despite being in China. Like you always have these amazing people around you and surrounding and having, you know, a, making your day every single like time just in a in a, an amazing way. Um, there's like lots of things, and I feel like the college itself is a very integral place. And when I say integral, it's because you have gyms there, you have like the canteen, you have library, you have your rooms, you have student lounges. So um, I will have every single like probably night people knocking on my door asking me, hey, Katia, let's go, you know, sit down on the lounge, like, let's study Chinese, um, let's do something else. So you really get to experience and have a lifestyle that makes your well-being, like, feel so great. Because <laughs> you, like, had, like, all of these amazing things going on. And, and, and I mean, I remember that I, I'm, I'm, I'm someone that really likes to work out. So Melanie used to organize CrossFit sessions. I was also into meditation, so there, were, there was always a message every single day of people saying uh, we're doing, you know, a yoga, um, you know, a yoga class or a meditation session, or who's coming down to grab dinner or going out in the canteens. Um, I personally um, wanted to transition from, you know, the the kind of the private sector to develop, development work. So I, I got a lot of chances of always interacting with the Chinhua community that was, you know, or that had this part on development. So I found a club actually that worked with sustainable development um, and I hosted conversations in the college with them. I went and attended some of their conferences. So it was always like a very active and like proactive community of people. Uh, so I will say that was definitely a great experience. So 
if you ever think of joining the Swartzman community, I feel like coming there, you just, you're just left speechless because you never feel alone. You are always um, with talent, like surrounded by talented people and you always have someone to relate to. So that makes it more exciting and more happy um, to be there as well. Hey, thanks so much, Katya. I think one of my favorite photos from, from last year is you doing the crossing the monkey bars on the pull-up bars down at the end of the uh, <laughs> at the end of the campus as, as we work through a workout. Um, did anybody else want to add uh, anything but, uh, about living in the college or or living on the Tsinghua campus before before we move on? I, I can add something because um, I think, you know, um, for many of you guys, maybe you guys haven't been to China before. So I think it's really, uh, really interesting to think about Tsinghua and Schwarzman in the context of, of China. So obviously China is an incredibly big country. And then, you know, we have Beijing as the capital and not only is it the political center, but it's also where much of the money flows and, you know, where important decisions are made and also where the education hub is. And so where Tsinghua actually is, Beijing is an incredibly big city. Um, and where we are is in this district called Haidian District. And this district is where most of, there's like the most number of um, higher education and actually other education as well. So for, for people, for Americans, you can kind of think of Boston where there's just so many colleges, just Harvard, you know, BU, BC, all of these colleges for, for, for us, um, in, in Beijing, there's, you know, Tsinghua, which is where we are. And then there's also Beida, which is kind of like the second or first, uh, you know, top tier university. And then there's all these other ones, right? So it's really interesting, not only to be in Tsinghua, but also to be in the district where you're surrounded by the most, you know, educated population of China. Um, and then of course, within Tsinghua, you have the most prestigious, um, you know, institution at your fingertips. And within there you have, you know, the college. So just to give you kind of like an image of what an extraordinary place, um, you know, you'll be, you'll be in if you, if you were at the college or at Tsinghua. Great, thanks so much, Mandy, uh, for adding that. Uh, again, for those of you for, who, who don't know much about uh, higher education in, in China, um, I, I had this surprise as well when I first joined there. I, I knew that Tsinghua was a top tier, you know, or the top tier university in China, but it wasn't until we were out and, you know, traveling in remote, remote parts of China and if you wear a t-shirt or a sweatshirt that says Tsinghua on it, everybody <laughs> stops to ask you about it uh, and, and is very excited that, that you're from Tsinghua and you're, uh, you're, you're traveling in, in that region. So I, I hadn't quite realized uh, um, sort of the, the fame of, of Tsinghua and how, how far that reached in China. Uh, let's see, well, well, let's jump in next with, with um, the topic of learning Chinese, because all of our students study Chinese, all of our foreign students will study Chinese for the first module at least. Many of them will take it the whole way through, depending on, on, the, on their priorities. Uh, but it's every year when we ask incoming students what's their greatest fear and what's their greatest hope for the program, uh, learning Chinese and being able to get around in Chinese is among um, the highest uh, fears among the, uh, the incoming international students. So we will turn it over to Mandy, who can hopefully help us wedge those fears a little bit. Yeah, yeah, no, I, I definitely get that question a lot. And, you know, to be honest, so I, you know, I'm Chinese American, I'm, you know, raised in a household that speaks um, Cantonese, which is a different dialect, but, you know, Chinese, um, and still it terrifies me, but that's like, you know, that being terrified in that way is actually quite exciting because I, I think Chinese is a beautiful, beautiful language and people will probably disagree with me, but I think it's much more beautiful than English. And I just think there's, there's so much to learn from it. Um, and I think that'll be part of the wonderful experience at Shoresman and for sure, you know, uh, why can also, you know, talk more about the um, emissions guidelines and stuff, but you by no means need any, any language requirements, right? So in our cohort, you have people, obviously, who are native Chinese speakers, you know, from China. Um, and then you have folks like me who are Chinese American or, you know, um, Chinese ra raised with the language somehow. And then, of course, you have people who have, you know, never spoken the language and never been heard of it or or, or whatever, right? So, so totally fine, whichever level you're in. Um, but I think it's a gift. And for me, you know, it was such an incredible part of the experience. I think the first thing is just the incredible, incredible teachers that we have. So, um, as Melanie said, for the for, for all foreign um, foreign scholars, you are mandatory. It, it is mandatory to at least take one semester, I think, right now, of Chinese. And so, for for me, what that looked like was, you know, every I think Monday through Thursday, um, I think an 8 a.m. class uh, with a couple of people at my same level. 
Um, and, and, you know, one, we had an incredible teacher. She was just, you know, so good at her job. And then also it was an, it was a really bonding experience with my uh, classmates in my Chinese class, because you really feel like you're like, you know, you're, you're like climbing a mountain with them, right? It's such a difficult language, but together you guys are learning it. And then you guys are going out into the city and, you know, experiencing it and using it. And so you really feel the sense of camaraderie, I think, especially with, um, with, with other scholars who are learning Chinese with you. Um, and I honestly didn't realize how incredible, um, incredibly professional the, the, the teachers were until after I left Shoresman. So right now I'm living in Shanghai and I have actually gone through a couple of Chinese uh, teachers, um, you know, for, for private lessons and it's just nothing compares to it at all, you know, in terms of structure, in terms of, you know, uh, capabilities and, you know, all of that. And so it was really just, I, I felt so privileged that I was able to get a year of such high quality um, Chinese education. And I think the thing, the second thing to me, which just, you know, is more personal is watching, you know, incredible peers who started from no Chinese at all uh, to getting to something like HSK three, right? So there's, I think there's six levels of HSK, um, just so you get a sense of, of what I'm talking about. And I had this friend, Alex K, who literally came in with no Chinese at all. And, and then he was one of those, you know, ballsy people who just like starts talking to everyone in Chinese. And, and by the end of it, you know, he was, it was so impressive and he can convey his thoughts and you know, he can go into a restaurant, fully order and have conversations. And, you know, I think that that was just really a major thing. I mean, you have peers who have all sorts of capabilities, but then watching someone learn and be curious and grow so quickly, it's, it's, it, that was really in, inspiring for me. And especially to see that play out with, with a language, um, was really interesting. Um, and then the other thing I'll add is especially for, um, folks who are really passionate about the language, but who really wanted even more help, actually, because we are in the education hub of, of Beijing and of China, there were so many options for you to get private lessons if you wanted yourself. So, you know, there's probably many other ones as well, but for uh, my year, there was a very popular um, institution right outside of Tsinghua. So, you know, you can walk, you know, 20 minutes or bike five minutes and get there. Um, and it was called Purple Bamboo. And I knew at least five to 10 uh, people from my year who ended up going there and taking extra classes just to improve further. So, you know, even beyond the amazing uh, resources from Shortsman and from Tsinghua, you can also easily uh, go seek out additional resources yourself. Um, and then the last thing I'll say about Chinese is just it's it's incredible to be able to learn it and then, you know, actually use it, whether it's using it in the college itself or in Tsinghua or, you know, when you go out into the city and it's just a sense of accomplishment and, and feeling more connected. So, you know, I think it's an amazing thing that we offered, of course, you know, as um, as you know, we say in our pamphlets and all of that stuff, like learning Chinese isn't like the priority, right? And there's, you know, it's, it's building these relationships, being part of this larger, broader program and all of that stuff. But if, you know, learning Chinese is of interest to you, then it's something that's easily accessible. Um, and it's also something not to be terrified with, about because you're going through it with, you know, 100 other folks and um, it, it's, it's really a great experience. Oh, thanks so much, Mandy. I, I should cut this little clip and share it with our, our language teacher team. Um, they'll be so pleased. It really is such a dedicated team of teachers and they get so excited and happy when they when they see their students continuing on and, and using Chinese and, and being successful in their learning. So I, I'll pass that on to Jubo and the team. Um, did any of the other panelists want to add anything about uh, about their experience of learning Chinese? And just to add into what um, to Mandy said from the admission side, she mentioned um, there's not a requirement for background in studying Mandarin when you apply. So if you've studied it um, either in college or in high school, great. If you haven't studied it and have never spoken a word of Chinese before, great. Um, if you're a heritage speaker, great. Um, and everywhere in between. So um, that is not a, a factor in the admissions process. Um, so um, it, and wherever you are, yeah, you know, the Jubal and the amazing team that, that Melanie and, and Mandy mentioned are there to kind of meet you where you are uh, and then help you accelerate upwards. Um, it really is, I, I've studied Chinese now for 15 years and um, every time I'm at the college, I'm really blown away by the, like Mandy said, the level of um, uh, expertise and incredible instruction that the scholars get um, through the Chinese language program. So if you ever have any questions about that related to the admissions process, just let us know. So, Melanie, back to you. Great, thanks for clarifying that, Wyatt. Yeah, and in fact, we, because we collect um, data on this as, uh, with incoming students, um, for the past few years, it's been about 50% of our incoming international students have never studied Chinese language before, and 50% and have. That seems to be where, where we've, we've hit. 
Um, one of the things that we have been offering the last couple of summers is uh, an online program for uh, about 12 weeks uh, for, for people who wish to do it um, called Lingo Bus, where you can start, you can begin your, your Chinese language learning um, in the summer prior to, to joining the program. And that way you would then start sort of with in a, in a, a class that's uh, beyond the absolute beginner class uh, when you get there. Um, and in China, it can be really nice to already have a little bit of, of, uh, of um, uh, knowledge of the language uh, when you arrive. Um, so that's become a very popular program. I think we had 50 of our, of our incoming students uh, participate in that uh, this year. Great, well, thanks so much, Mandy, for, for sharing uh, your experience. Um, we'll turn it over to Jack uh, to talk a little bit about what, what it's like to be a Schwartzman scholar and living in Beijing and exploring China. Okay, um, thank you, Melanie. So um, in addition to many on-campus involvement that uh, Katya and Mandy mentioned, I will now focus on and share my experience on the plentiful opportunities available to scholars uh, to leave campus and explore Beijing and beyond. So actually the college offers uh, bi-weekly deep dive excursions to cultural sites and attractions. And then these, uh, these tours are actually led by staff members that are really knowledgeable and will certainly give you an insider view to these sites. And these are also great opportunities for scholars to engage with the local community and also get a sense of the rich Chinese culture and, and history. So some of my personal favorites include, say visits to the Forbidden City and the Qingshan Park. Both are landmark attractions. And then another, a uh, site visit that, that we went to was to visit the Yonghe Lama Temple, which is through, through that, that one day trip, we got to know more about the Buddhist faith as how it became a salient belief for many, uh, for, for, for many Chinese people as well. And um, in addition to that, I think the career development team also offers company visits for scholars interested in exploring a particular industry. Uh, these employers uh, located in, in, in Beijing, of course, are also interested in knowing more about the program as well as to get to know about the scholars. Uh, so for me, one of the most memorable experience was a, a, a visit to Kingdom Woods, which is one of the largest and most premier law firms in Beijing. And uh, throughout our day, day visit, we actually uh, went through a company presentation, we went through two workshops, there, and also end of the day was like networking sessions with partners and associates during the day visit. So for me, as someone interested in the legal industry, this visit was extremely helpful as it introduced me to the work environment and lifestyles for lawyers working in the Chinese legal industry. And uh, while the college will certainly lead and arrange many outings for scholars to choose from, most scholars will explore and self-initiate involvement uh, with the local community, whether it's through part-time internships or through volunteering. Uh, internships, for those who are interested in partaking in uh, part-time internships during the academic year, the, uh, the career development team is there to actually help you land an ideal internship from the very first day of the program. And um, my own internship experience, I, I actually managed to fit a uh, part-time internship into my schedule while working as a research intern and a young ambassador at the Carnegie Tsinghua Center for Global Policy, which is a branch of the think tank uh, of the Carnegie Endowment. And um, I, I think I, that, that experience, I think, was also very, um, I, I also learned a great deal from that experience as it helped me put my classroom knowledge uh, into action by drafting policy briefs and also drafting reports. And also through that internship, I also met other students, other not only Tsinghua students, but also Chinese students from other universities. As Mandy also mentioned, there's, there's Beida, there, there's uh, Renda, all these universities around that you can get to connect and, and socialize uh, during off hours. And um, also volunteering op opportunities are also available to uh, scholars. Uh, members from our cohort actually volunteered at a, a school called the Dandelion School, which is a high school uh, for children of migrant workers uh, who came to Beijing, who are otherwise not eligible to participate in the Beijing public schooling system. So these scholars went almost like we weekly or bi-weekly to the Dandelion School and then taught courses and piloted their own education program in collaboration with the school. And uh, they also invited these students and then the school administrators to back to our campus to also share their experience with other scholars as well. And um, I guess next comes to my uh, favorite part, which is to explore China during breaks. So uh, as, as so the academic schedule, we most we have Friday off most of the time. So many scholars would actually uh, take advantage of that and then make that into a long weekend and then get to explore uh, different parts of China maybe outside of Beijing. And uh, actually uh, the college was sponsored for our cohort, the college was sponsored a round, 
way plane ticket to any destination in China to encourage uh, scholars to actually explore different parts. And um, for myself, uh, we actually visited Xinjiang with a group of 20 scholars during the October break for seven days. And it was certainly one of the most memorable experiences I had during the program. We actually rented a full size bus and then, uh, and then we uh, numerous conversations and then uh, activities or games are happening along all these long day trips. And we really developed deep relationships uh, through these conversations by the end of the trip. And um, I, an, another experience that I, um, uh, that is very memorable to me is a skiing trip to Zhang Jiakou during the New Year's break, which is uh, Zhang Jiakou, which is the official uh, 2022 Beijing Winter Olympics site. And then uh, a, a few scholars decided to go there. And then actually we got to experience the newly opened high speed railway uh, from Beijing to Zhang Jiakou, which cut the time from Zhang Jiakou from three hours to right now, I guess, less than an hour. So it's become a really, really co convenient location for scholars who love skiing and the winter sports. And um, I, 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 I guess in short, being a uh, Swarthman scholar would uh, enable you uh, not only to participate in, in many on-campus environment, but also to explore numerous aspects of life outside of campus. And I truly think that is uh, one of the biggest highlights of the program. Thank you so much, Jack, for, for sharing your, your experiences. Um, the, any of our other panelists want to say anything about uh, their experiences in Beijing or, or exploring China? Yeah, I actually wanted to add a little bit on that. Um, I, I actually got to, to explore like uh, nine different cities throughout the like year that I was, you know, I was being a, a Swartzman scholar. And I feel like that's one of the most significant um, aspects also of the program. And I, and, I, and I kind of resonate and I feel like this is what combines with Mandy, um, Jack, and you know, we all are talking this, this time is that in order for you to get the actual like China experience, you need to be out there exploring. I mean, not only in there, because the Tsinghua actually campus is an entire city. So for you just to even go out, that's just one experience of getting to know the culture. Um, so it was really great because every time we had a, a trip plan, uh, there was like a variety of uh, places that we do went through. And actually we, we kind of experienced the different seasons in China because you know, we are having summer, then we had like uh, autumn and then winter. So it was really pretty. And I feel like the more uh, you, you are like, very willing to go out and explore China, the, the, the higher the chances you are just to experience the culture and get a different taste of it. So it's all about, you know, not just staying there like in your room or like just studying 24 seven, because although that's part of the experience too, but it's all about, you know, being um, proactive and finding the right people as well that are organizing this type of trip. So it was definitely a, a very beautiful experience for everyone, I'm sure. Great, thanks so much, Katya. Katya, I think you you came on our our crazy winter hike uh, along the, uh, the the broken down section of the Great Wall in December, I think, and Arnaz as well. I think it was we we had had a blizzard the night before, and um, the Great Wall was was covered in snow and ice, and uh, it's a challenging hike at the best of times. Uh, but uh, when you add snow and ice on top of it, uh, so I was very impressed with those of you who still got up at 6 a.m. And, and came to explore uh, explore outside of Beijing uh, with that, despite the weather. Um, as Katya said, I think that the people who really get so much out of the program are the people who who say yes to these, these amazing opportunities to get outside of our very comfortable building. Uh, you could stay there very comfortably for the entire 10 months, and it's the people who get out of outside of the building and off campus and explore um, who, who really uh, find these really wonderful, impactful moments. Um, great, so, th so thank you all for sharing. Um, let's see, and we'll, we'll, we'll move over to Arnaz uh, now, who will talk about um, a big part of being a, a Schwartzman scholar or all of the many activities that, that do go on within, within the cohort. So over to you, Arnaz. Great, thanks. I'm really excited to talk about uh, student-led events at Schwartzman College. So the first, so, so I think one of the things about student-led events is that a lot of these have been um, established by the first cohort that came in and then the second cohort added a few things and the third and the fourth cohort. So it keeps like with every new cohort that comes in, there seems to be like one new event that is added to the calendar. And 
uh, one of the most famous things that we have is the Chaguan Union, which is like, uh, I think Chaguan kind of stands for like a tea room and it's a space for people to have nuanced conversations about China. So whether it's Chinese society, politics, uh, things in terms of like Chinese law development in uh, the, just the general social political atmosphere, I think it's a really interesting space where people from different parts of China and people who have prior experience working in China or studying about China come in and talk about their expertise or their interest areas. Um, another thing that we have is the Steve Street. Uh, so about once in two weeks, we have this event in the Master Kong pub, which is I think almost all of our favorite part of the building, probably aside from people like Katya who used to go to the gym all the time, like, wow. Uh, uh, so we have these seats based at the Master Kong Pub and there are people who uh, pick topics of interest. So they, these could be areas of academic or professional expertise, or they've got personal experiences of living through social political conflict and just sharing their stories of growth and learning through adversity. And can be, Something like uh, one of our uh, classmates who spoke about her time in South Africa protesting in, as, as part of the Roads Must Fall movement. And then there was also another scholar who spoke about how everyone needs to use RM data for everything. Um, so it's just like, it's a diverse range of talks that we have. Um, and then there's this uh, event called the Ask Me Anything event, which was started in our cohort. And uh, Melanie actually was so used, in, in, influential in like, helping us get set this up because I went to her um, ask with this idea of having a space where people from parts of the world that were underrepresented in the cohort could come together to talk about their lives in their own countries. So um, because around the time that I held the first Ask Me Anything conversation, there was civil strife in India, Iran, in Chile, and the world was in turmoil outside of Schwarzman College. And there was so much uh, space, so much potential for people within the program to come together and really talk about what was happening outside the walls of the phenomenal building that we were inhabiting. And so Ask Me Anything has been incredible because we had conversations on Black Lives Matter, on Israel's annexation of the West Bank, on uh, India's anti-citizenship uh, amendment act protests and things like that. Um, and then after COVID broke out and we had to move on to online learning, some of my classmates actually came up with this idea of holding this uh, conversation series called Ahead of the Curve, where we had conversations on life uh, in a post-COVID world. So for instance, they bring in interesting people from um, who are working in health tech, for instance, or people who are working with nonprofits or corporations and talk about um, how the role of corporations and nonprofits will change post COVID-19, what sort of innovations in healthcare would be required to deal with the surge in uh, uh, medical healthcare facilities um, and the overcapacity of hospitals and the crisis in public health leadership, things like that. And then aside from that, we'd also have a lot of fun things. So for festivals, we actually used to have uh, celebrations. We had the Christmas gala. We had something for Diwali as well that the Indian scholars tried to put together. And then we had, a film club also at 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 Watson College, and sometimes they hold uh, screenings at Dalio, which was our auditorium. Um, and then aside from that, there's also a lot of really cool things happening at Tsinghua. So there was this um, equivalent of TED Talks at Tsinghua called I Talk. So people would go and like talk about their life and leadership experiences. Uh, one of my close friends also had a chance to speak here, and it was super exciting to see her speak. Um, then there's the Tsinghua Gala which happens once a year and it's a huge event. Like there are these phenomenal performances that students put up. And we also had the Schwartz and Scholar Choir performing there, it was beautiful. And it was really, really, I think one of the best parts of the year was probably the Chinghua Gala for everyone. And um, we also had this really incredible uh, theater on Chinghua. I don't remember what it was called, but it was like in a really old, domed building and the last film I ever saw in a movie theater was actually here like because after that there was COVID and I've never been inside a theater after that but the last thing I watched was like the last episode of Star Wars in this domed theater and it was incredible and we also had once this Iranian filmmaker come down to Chinghua and screen his film and uh, we got a chance to speak to him afterwards so there's literally such incredible things happening at Chinghua it's an amazing place to be like uh, Mandy's already mentioned um, and then 
sometimes you also used to have like a lot of these scholars would hold a trip to a deep dive trip in their home country so we had one for south korea one for japan one for india as well and it, it was actually a super interesting uh, opportunity for people from different parts of the world to go around especially countries that were close to china and so were easy to travel around in so i think that's pretty much yeah that pretty much sums up student life <laughs> Yeah, and thank you so much, Arnaz. And Arnaz mentioned about the, you know, trips outside of China. Um, uh, Jack and Katya talked about trips inside China. Um, during the calendar year, usually there's a couple of one week um, holiday periods where people have the opportunity to travel. And then there's also that major break between the first and the second semester, which is about, well, for students, it's almost five weeks uh, vacation. And so a lot of a lot of students traditionally use that time to explore China um, further or explore some of the other countries around in the region um, with whom China has has uh, um, relationships uh, to learn more about those those relationships as well. So uh, there's lots of lots of opportunities for exploring. Um, I'm not sure that before we jump to the next question. I'm not sure if anyone else wanted to add anything to Arnaz Arnaz's uh, description. And Arnaz, you're being modest. Arnaz had this great idea for the, the Ask Me Anything. Um, so she spearheaded and um, got that up and running. And, and um, that's been a, a really interesting and ongoing student-led uh, group this, uh, this year as well. We've had some just exceptionally interesting, uh, interesting conversations. Okay, well, I'll, I'll, I have a question for all of you then, and I'll, I'll ask you to, to briefly share. Um, but every year, you know, when, when we talk to alumni who are just graduating, when we talk to alumni who have graduated uh, some years ago, we ask, what were the key elements of the program? What were the most impactful elements of the program for you? Top answer is always the, the people, uh, you know, the people that, that they, they met or connected with through the program. So I'll ask each of you to give an example or two, if you, if you have. Uh, of a person that you met through the program who's been impactful for you. And, and why don't we start with, let's see, we'll start with Mandy this time. Yeah, that's um, absolutely like the best thing about the program are the people. And it's just really, really incredible. So um, for me, I mean, there there's a whole list of people that I, I'm so grateful for. But the moment that I remember is when I decided to stay in China, actually. So, you know, I had decided to do the Shorzman program, thought, OK, I'll just be, you know, one year in Beijing and then I'll go back to New York where where is home and, you know, live a cushy life and just, you know, enjoy, enjoy the comforts of, of being home. Um, and I remember a year before graduating, there were two distinct conversations that really left a, a strong impact on me. Um, and the first one is with was with my mentor. So as part of the Shoresman program, there's also a mentorship program where you know um, we we are able to source these incredible incredible people and then you know pair them with with um, with scholars. So I was lucky enough to be paired with uh, a, a a woman called Susie Hunt, and she's a foreigner lived in you know Beijing for you know like many, many years and started her own business and just was an incredible person, but also because of just, you know, how, how much she cared about me, which, which was just really, really nice. And um, I always found it to be a respite, you know, outside of college to, to go meet her and share my experiences and, and kind of hear her wisdom. But I remember a month before graduating, she's like, so what are you planning to do? And, um, and I told her about my plans to go back to the U.S. And, and she said, um, you know, I remember when you, I first met you, you know, when you first joined Schwartzman and you told me uh, that you wanted, and this is really cheesy, but she said, you know, you told me that you wanted to fly with both of your wings. Um, and it sounds like you're only flying with one now. And both of my wings, you know, as cheesy as it is being my US and China side. Um, and it was just incredible. It was incredible to have someone care so much about me. It was incredible to have someone be that honest with me and hold me accountable. And someone who has, you know, incredible experience and background and, you know, the wisdom to, to know that this was an important point in my life and that she could share that with me. And so that that was just, you know, incredible. Um, I, I mean, my life would be different, I think, if I hadn't had that wake up call from, from her. Um, 
And then the other person I'll mention is actually my closest friend in Shortsman. And it's along the same threads, but I remember I was in a Xinhua canteen with her. And also one other plug I'll give is that Xinhua canteen has amazing food, which I, I miss dearly. But um, we were we were in the Xinhua canteen and I was also telling her about my plans to go back to the US. And, and you know, she just looked at me and said, you know, Mandy, like, you know, what is the point of, and, and this is not to put too much pressure on me myself, but she said, you know, what is the um, point of our program if people like you won't consider staying and won't consider exploring further the relationship between U.S. and China. Um, and, and she said that also because she knew that was an interest of mine, but that I was just personally afraid, right? So, you know, she and, and you know, um, I still am, you know, she's still one of my best friends and I still, and one of the other things I'll say is the alumni community is, is really, really tight. And, you know, you're a Schwarzman scholar, they're living there for, for a year, but really you're a Schwarzman scholar scholar for life and that's community that you'll have but um I just felt so incredibly grateful you know it's not often you meet people in your life who are able to un really understand you and you know really add perspective and um a level of um you know you know wisdom um that 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 really makes an impact and for me you know it was it was that pivotal pivotal moment and, and two people through the Shoresman program that I was able to meet who who really helped me make that decision um and I've been so grateful since so yeah that's that's the, sh the story I would like to share and and just you know amazing amazing people in part in the program great thank you thanks so much for sharing that Mandy uh let's see we'll we'll go at the same question to Arnaz um, I would say that if, if I had to think about like people who had the most impact on me, I'd say because it came into the program with the intention of figuring out if academia was meant for me, I would say it was my academic mentors who had the most significant impact because aside from the fact that I got a chance to work with literally like some of my academic role models, uh, not just study under them, but also like my master's thesis with them, get their inputs on my thesis, even after my defense was done long after it was done and um, also get their advice on like how I go about my career. They wrote my LORs also for like all of my law school applications and I've been able to get into some of my dream programs only because I think of the fact that I had like this incredible experience of not just living in China but also studying the legal system so deeply um, and also getting these people to attest to the fact that I was indeed like a skilled researcher or a good enough candidate for any of the best programs in the world and I think I feel so grateful for that because it's always been like a question in my in my mind about whether or not it's a good idea for me to like try to become a professor or a skilled researcher and I think these people helped me figure that out for myself in a manner that I could have never imagined possible before I came to the program and it wasn't even something that I was expecting to do it just it is something that happened just by chance and I think I feel extremely lucky and grateful for that and uh, in terms of like the kind of people that I met in terms of the friends that I made I think it was Till the last month that I was in China, I was meeting new people, traveling with new people and trying to make even more friends than I imagined possible. Like Kathy was probably the last person that I traveled with because right before we had to like leave China, we were in the same language immersion program together in uh, Kunming. And then uh, even aside from that, I went all across all of these wonderful cities with my friends. And I remember on my birthday in Shanghai, uh, there were like, 10 or 11 of us took an Air Airbnb together. And on the day, no, night of my birthday, I was with uh, one of my closest friends. It was uh, New Year's Eve and we were on the bun and we saw the ball drop. And we never imagined what 2021 might turn out to be with COVID and all of that. But it was just so full of hope. And it was just incredible to be with literally human beings that just five months ago, I didn't even know existed. But after getting to know them, it's impossible to imagine my life without them. They're the first people I talk to when I have something happy to share or if I need any kind of advice on something. And I feel so unexpectedly connected to them. And it feels amazing to be part of such a community. So yeah. Oh, wonderful. Thank you so much, Arnaz. Uh, let's go with Jack next. Um, great. So. I want to echo uh, everything that Mandy and uh, Anna just said that the, the people aspect of the program, that the, the, the person that the mentor you get to meet of this program is, is, is really what's most uh, valuable and, uh, and long lasting. So for me, I, I guess a person that uh, had created, created the biggest impact on me was my, also my mentor that I met through the program. Uh, his name is Paul Henley. 
he is, he's actually the uh, the director of the Carnegie Tsinghua Center. And then uh, be, be, before his, his position, uh, he actually spent years in the US Army, also spent years in, in the Pentagon, spent years working as an advisor at the National Security Co Council in the White House. So for someone to have that much high profile, but also accessible to me as a mentor, I, I, I feel extremely fortunate and, and lucky. And then he was the one who also uh, convinced me to partake on that part-time internship with the uh, at, at the Carnegie Tsinghua Center, saying that it would definitely be that would definitely be a helpful uh, addition to my experience, and it definitely was. And um, and um, on top of that, I also recall that uh, during Christmas time, he actually invited me to his apartment for a Christmas party, where I got to meet his uh, family and his children, and also other pro professionals working in the Beijing area. And then, so it's like the 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 amount of I I I guess how 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 he invited me to his like close circles how he invited me to his connections I I do feel truly grateful for that and then also I remember last year around springtime while COVID started to happen and then many of my postgraduate Asian plans was kind of more or less affected I also immediately reached out to him he was actually the first on my mind that I thought oh I, I actually wanted to get Paul's input on this asking asking him how he went through all these uncertainties, how to how to manage things and how to plan for the future where like the the immediate consequences or or the decisions unknown. So for uh so he he and then he indeed like shared some of his personal stories and then how 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 he went through the adversities and then was really comforting and then helped me uh, navigate my my post graduation plans. Yeah. So yeah I'm I, I'm truly grateful for him and also for the program for uh, creating that uh, connection, which also even lasts until today, which I also frequently reach out, uh, whether it's on my law school applications, whether it's like figuring out paths, if I if law school is right for me, what like what other options are available? He is the the go to person. Yeah. Oh, great! Thanks so much, Jack. I'm glad I'm glad your mentor uh, ended up having such a, a positive impact for you. This is wonderful. Uh, and then finally, over to Katya, uh, and and then hopefully we'll we'll have a very short amount of time for, for Q&A. Yeah, thanks, Melanie. I think everyone has definitely mentioned people, so I don't want to be repetitive, but again, it's people who have impacted definitely my life and my time at Swartzman. Um, something that's worth noting, um, when I was trying to think of who, who was like very meaningful during my experience, it's many people. Uh, but I will say that, that uh, something that the program has is that you know, by the kind of the end or the last semester, we have to do our thesis. So actually uh, in our cohort, it was the first time that we had the chance to do it in a group. Um, so in that time, uh, the opportunity to not only do it in a group was, you know, amazing, but also because this meant also doing it with a, with a company in China. So as uh, someone that came from a very like different culture from all over the world, I was trying to get the real hands-on experience and understand businesses in China, you know, see their real perspectives and, and, and things that were happening there. So I decided to work with this uh, company and with that, uh, three more friends. Um, and it was really amazing, but at the same time complex because the thesis was actually with like in a language. I mean, not, not I, would, I wouldn't say that, that I had to write the entire thesis in Chinese, but most of the high level people that we had to meet and like trying to understand in order to do our thesis were all like um, Chinese, you know, um, senior executives. And they, although they knew the language, it was also good to at least have, you know, the experience of understanding uh, what they actually did in, in their own language. And not only was that, but also that the, that, that project meant expanding operations of that Chinese company to Portuguese speaking countries. Another language that I didn't know as well that much, although I come from a Spanish background and so on. Um, anyways, long story made short, um, I had a mentor, obviously like a, a thesis advisor, but on the side, I met incredibly uh, and talented professional and professor that I know we all love. And, and, I, and I'm sure he was even like, named best professor in like in, in our cohort, Dean Pan. <laughs> He's an incredibly uh, person, always smiling, very charming. Um, and he was there. I remember I asked him for a coffee because I was kind of struggling to understand certain aspects on how to go about my thesis, even though I had my thesis advisor, but I wanted to have a different perspective. So having someone that really opened up himself 
because obviously he knew about the culture, he knew the way um, of doing business in China and knew a lot of things. Um, he opened up his, uh, himself and was always available whenever I had the most random questions. And it was that experience that made me believe that, wow, like there's so many people, even though he had so many things on his play, like so many classes to teach, so many high like level meetings to attend, he was always available. And I feel that's the beauty of the program as well, that you might see these people with such great titles, but at the end of the day, they're humans and they're incredibly kind people. And I feel like that that makes it even powerful. So till date, I whenever I have something to ask about China or about anything else and navigating that uh, culture, he's always um, down for a call or down to, you know, chat and like have an amazing conversation. Um, and I know it's only one person, but it's difficult for me to not mention uh, my other group of friends that actually end up being a kind of my closest group, the Latino community. Like we even had a hope. Uh, it was one of my friends' um, uh, dorms, which we call it a hope because every single night we, we used to gather all together and like kind of debrief our days. And it was really beautiful because from that specific like group of friends, now that I like look back till the time I graduated, we have been nonstop talking to each other. We literally call each other every single day. Actually, right now I'm in New York at my friend's house who happened to be <laughs> with me um, at a Star Trek program. Uh, and we just travel together. We've been like, it doesn't feel like I have been disconnected since I left China. It's always like a family for me. And I feel like that's the value and like the beauty of the program. Um, that you have people that are just willing to give you um, an advice that's willing to hear you, uh, whatever you're going through. So I feel that that that's a beauty of it, um, and I'm so happy I, I got the chance to to meet these amazing people. Great. Well, thank thank you all so much for sharing. I think Wyatt is going to pose a couple of questions from the list. If you reply, I'll ask you to keep it deep and brief, uh, super brief, so that we can answer a couple of questions before we. I know we wanted to wrap up on time. Awesome. Thanks, Melanie. So. Um, well said, everyone. And one, a couple of really great questions came in about life in the residence hall. So um, if one or two of you could speak to like, what's it like living in the residence hall? What's your room set up? What's the bathroom set up? And then specifically someone asked about um, what's the common room? Uh, where do you congregate with other scholars? What would you say is the best place and time in the program and in the building to make meaningful connections with your other scholars? Anyone want to jump in on that? Mandy, what about you? What's your gut, gut reaction on that one? Yeah, well, I'll just put a plug for actually a podcast that me and um, one of my other, one of the other uh, scholars started and it's called Common Room Conversations. So that just points to how important the common room spaces are. So on the residential floors, basically at each of the corners, there's a common room. Um, and so it would be around like, you know, 10, 10, 15, um, uh, dorms and then there would be a common room and that really is where people congregate right like after a class before a class you know after dinner wherever people feel comfortable and just um you know that's where conversations happen and um th that was so impactful and that's where you know these authentic conversations where it's not necessarily about your professional or whatever where where they happen and, and so much so that you know after we graduated i decided to create this podcast um, with another scholar to really center around um, sharing alumni stories. So that's really, um, that's that's a point I'll, I'll, I'll share. I'm sure others have other other points. Great, no, that's awesome, that's super helpful. And just to clarify, each um, scholar does have their own uh, bedroom and bathroom at in the residence hall at the college. Uh, that's a great question. So there's um, a couple questions in here that came in about leadership. And as, as you've seen on our website and heard about the program, as you've looked into it, um, the, you know, the focus of the selection process really is on demonstrated leadership. And so it, I thought it'd be interesting to end with this question. And I'd love to have a couple of you um, reply to this. Um, so someone asked, what is the most significant transformation you've noticed in the leader that you are now in comparison to the leader slash individual you were at the start of the program? So I thought that was a really amazing question that I wrote down. So anyone want to jump in on that? Yeah, I can definitely yeah. double on that. Okay. Um, I feel like honestly, uh, coming into the program, um, I would say I had like a lot of expectations. I, as I mentioned before, I think the fact that I was exposed to a very international environment made me at the same time, I wouldn't say felt like challenging, but also like it was just like 
a new like you know like a new experience for me and like an incredible um way to go and like you know meet new people and understand different perspectives so i will say that definitely having empathy for you know the people that surrounds you um i feel like as leaders we definitely have to think of you know what does the other person uh, want to really, you know, be or do, and like it's it's all about. And I think that the Startman uh, experience and leadership opportunities really taught us how to be, you know, first of all, um, emp empathetic leaders. Like it's not that I'm gonna be doing my things and I'm not gonna let you do yours. It's like we're all in this community and like we're all united and we we all help each other thrive. So I feel um, having that better understanding into the program uh, made me believe that, you know, that this is the type of like person and type of role models that I would like to, you know, foster and see in the future. And that's, I feel like that's why, and now right now in the organization that I'm working at, actually, um, that's something that we foster a lot, like that community, that engagement, and that experience of having, you know, to really uh, deal with uh, other people's, you know, uh, circumstances in a way that is just to make them all try. Um, so I definitely feel that that was a very uh, great experience for me and that was transformational. Um, also the opportunity to just, you know, be on a high like level, like <laughs> exposure because we had like different people who were coming from all over the place and having dinners and conversations made me really like open up myself and, you know, don't be afraid of like saying my opinion, uh, saying what I thought about a specific topic and sharing all of this ex incredible experience. I think it was valuable, definitely in the program. Awesome, beautifully said. Any, anyone else want to jump in on that for our, our last reply, Jack? Uh, yes, I, I, I guess I'll add something real quick because uh, I think it's a really good question and very tough to answer. So I, I do want to share my reflections on this because uh, looking back at the program, I, I think I, I did come into the program more on the relatively younger side in, in terms that I was fresh out of undergrad and then immediately joined the program. So my prior experience were all like on-campus involvements or, or short-term in internship. And then initially I thought that, oh, from this program after I, I graduate, it will, it will immediately point me towards a direction so that I will, I will know where to go and work for, for the next five, 10 years. But actually throughout the, 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 the program, through the numerous conversations I had with, with scholars, and then these scholars are actually ranging from all like age groups. Many are actually like have four or five, five years professional experience. And then to hear their stories, uh, hear how they kind of create an impact, how, how they uh, realize their goals. It actually made, made me reflect on myself saying that, oh, it's like the, I, I, I guess the path to, to leadership, the path to creating a change is not fixed, it's, it's, it's rather fluid and only you can define what that path is and, and what best works for you. So I guess one of the biggest lessons after the program that I knew that I do want to further my education, I do want to pursue law school, which wasn't like exactly on top of my radar before the Swarthman program, but I, I was able to get that kind of self-awareness and then self-development through, through that one year by uh, con conversing with scholars, by conversing with, with relevant faculties. So, so I guess that is my take on, on the program. Great. Thank you, Jack. And I just want to thank all of you for uh, for spending the time with us. It is 11, it is midnight actually where Mandy is in Shanghai right now. And um, I'm just so grateful for the, the chance to spend the hour together. It always is, is such a gift. And uh, I, I know every uh, our 100 plus attendees um, had such an amazing experience interacting with you as well. So um, for those of you joining us, this is just the beginning of the conversation. We will we'll follow up with you through email today after today's session with more information about how to connect with us, how to learn more about Schwarzman Scholars, and we will be back in touch on April 14th when our application for U.S. Global Admissions opens, uh, which will close on September 21st of 2021. Our interviews will take place virtually in late October, early November. Um, the class will be announced in December of 2021 for an August 2022 start date in Beijing. So thank you so much again for joining us. Thank you, Melanie, for, um, for being such an amazing host. Um, and we just are so grateful that you've joined us today and hope you have a great rest of the day wherever you are in the world. Thanks again and take care. Hey, thank you all. And it's so nice to see all of, all of you four too. Likewise, thank you.